Makundi 20 yanatarajiwa kuwasilisha maoni yao katika siku ya mwisho ya kupokea maoni kwa kamati ya maridhiano ya kitaifa katika ukumbi wa Bomas hapa Nairobi. Baadhi waliotoa maoni yao leo ni wabunge 27 wanaotaka kaunti 11 zaidi zibuniwe pamoja na muungano wa makanisa nchini unaotaka sheria ya fedha ya mwaka 2023 ifanyiwe marekebisho. Jengo hili anafuatilia vikao hivyo vya kutoka Bomas tusikilize yale yanayojiri kwa sasa. It requires a lot of resources, time, and so on. So this is why we are asking that our capacity be increased so that we can act as quickly as possible on the cases that come up. Uh, thirdly, as I close and hand over to the CEO to answer some of the other questions, you'll find that uh, our mandate, unlike what... Uh, Honorable Mgeni uh, raised in other jurisdictions. We are supposed to respond to all kinds of corruption cases and bribery cases. We received thousands of reports from Kenyans who uh, have witnessed incidences. This can range from a person, I, I have given this example before, immediately arrived in office, somebody sent an email uh, because a chief had demanded 200 shillings from them and they wanted ESCC to act quickly. Two weeks later, before uh, we, we didn't reply, they sent a reminder. Uh, we have not seen any action uh, taken on this chief who has taken 200 shillings. Now, 200 shillings for us is very small, but for this person to write, it is a very significant amount of money for them. On the other hand, we are dealing with cases where people have embezzled 8 billion shillings. Uh, some 50 billion shillings. So this is the scope that we have. It therefore requires that we focus and we have uh, um, focused our attention on high impact cases and on high impact individuals. That's why sometimes you do not see the quick responses to some of the incidences as we would expect uh, from, from us as an office. But our mandate is very broad and very widespread. Let me allow CEO to answer the more specific questions. Uh, thank you, thank you. Muna CEO. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. I think uh, first I would like to blow my own trumpet. I have served in this government as a public officer for 40 years. So I'm relatively a seasoned public officer. <laughs> 40 years, this is somebody who is now aging, going to the next stage of physiology, every time attending to a doctor and all that. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the integrity of our officers. It started with the chairman who has left, the Honorable uh, Musioka, uh, my former colleague in the Kenyan Corruption Commission, uh, Honorable Omogeni. We were together, and I can tell you that most of those guys who people say are extorting as EACC officers are con men. Con men. Most of them. And I can give an example. I will not mention names. One MP came furious to my office saying there is a, a senior officer in the regions who is taking money. And uh, he wants, she wants to report. She, it was a lady MP. And uh, she came with another MP, who used to be a member of JLAC, said, come to my office. They came, they, give the, they gave the story, and asked for the name of that person and the telephone number. So we went to the, uh, immediately, you know, you, you, with smartphone, you, you key in first name in the mailbox. There's no such a person. Immediately I called the HR, do we have, do we have such a staff? No. The MP was dealing with a con man. That is what is happening. They are very smart. They have business card. There is even one con man that we arrested. And he told us openly he is a professional con man. His children are in school, even university. And he is making good money. And even if we release him, he will go back to be a con man. And he said openly that he is a university graduate, desperate, looking for employment. He cannot get employment. So most of these guys purporting to be ESCC officers are con men. And we tell people, if somebody says that he's an ESCC officer, check with us, or normally we say, we write an official letter to you, and we tell you, 
so and so and so and so will come and see you because we don't allow one officer to do investigation. If somebody says this person has taken bribe, it becomes difficult to confirm who is right and who is wrong. So our, our, our process is that investigation should be done by two people and above. The, the issue that was raised by Senator Omar uh, on conviction, uh, I'm surprised because we don't convict. We, we take people, we take our files to the DPP, and the DPP is the one who prosecute, and then there's conviction. So when the case is with the DPP, it is beyond our control, uh, Senator Omar. We cannot determine the time, and it is out of this, I want to answer another question. Uh, Senator Omogeni asked us that we have not jailed or convicted senior people. We have nine cases of governors before court, starting with uh, Governor Sonko, uh, Governor Obado. I think if you look at the, the hierarchy, political hierarchy of this country, I'm not wrong, but if I'm wrong, I may be corrected. I think after the president and the deputy president, a governor is a very senior person, I think third in the, in the system. So